I've seen a lot of English-speaking media do an awful job at previewing the Vietnamese women's national team, so I'll do it myself. Much like the men's team, the women's team didn't start until the late 90s. Under head coach Mai Duc Chung, the team entered its first ever Southeast Asian Games in 1997 and won the bronze medal. Then in 2001, under Steve Darby, the team won its first gold medal in the competition. Myanmar liên tục vào bóng hấp ý trong tình huống phạm lỗi đã bị chốt quyền thi đấu. Mai Duc Chung then returned as head coach in 2003 and led the nation to another two gold medals. However, he'd once again depart from the national team soon after. Despite winning another gold medal in 2009 and two AFF Cups, Vietnam still didn't have enough quality to beat the likes of Asia's best. This was most evidently and painfully shown after a loss to rivals Thailand that denied them qualification to the 2015 Women's World Cup. This failure prompted Vietnam to introduce reforms that would promote women's football at schools, universities, and and even companies. Then in late 2014, Mai Duc Chung returned to lead the next generation of talent. Vietnam failed to qualify for 2019 because what the f is this group? But then the long-awaited moment came in 2022. Despite having 20 of 23 players affected by COVID in some way throughout the entire Asian Cup, Vietnam defeated Thailand and Taiwan in the tournament's second chance World Cup qualification playoffs to go to their first ever World Cup. Exciting moments, inspirational in fact. Let's go look at that group now. Now, how the f is this even possible? Somehow, some way, we managed to draw into a group with Portugal. And the two finalists from the last World Cup. So much for hope. Since the group draws though, Vietnam has been doing everything it possibly can to prepare for the tournament. There's been more of a focus on physical training to improve both endurance and strength, and recently they made a trip to Europe to play some higher quality teams. The main goal of that trip was not really the result, but more so just learning and adapting. Already there's a massive gap between Asia and Southeast Asia, so you could only imagine the gap between Southeast Asian opponents to European opponents. But their most notable friend during that trip was a match against Germany in late June. Despite losing 2-1, the Viet showed amazing tenacity and quality on both sides of the ball. And considering just last summer we lost 7-0 to France, this was a massive improvement. Keep in mind, this is the second best team in the world according to FIFA. But that all aside, how about we actually preview the team itself? Judging from the far superior competition that Vietnam will have to come up against, Mai Duc Chung will probably have his team set up in a five defender formation. We're not gonna see much of the ball like we do with our Southeast Asian opponents. I mean, that's, that's pretty obvious. Now in our last two friendlies, both against Germany and New Zealand, our defense was pretty difficult to break through, which I'd say is pretty important impressive considering the team's best defender, Chung Di Kyu, is currently recovering on the bench due to injury. The status of arguably our best defender is still pretty up in the air, but reports have said she's back to 90%. That being said, even if she does come back for Vietnam's opening game, it'll be against the world champions and she'll have to be at the top of her game. Now one problem that I recently saw in the New Zealand match in particular was the fact that our defense can be pretty sloppy. And if we see the same thing that we saw against New Zealand where there were just plenty of mistakes, plenty of miscarriages, kicks, oh we are getting destroyed. But New Zealand was noticeably more off than it should have been. Our defense did really well against Germany and was just the polar opposite against New Zealand. And the main factor to those struggles is probably the climate. Vietnam played their game in New Zealand in New Zealand, and there's a very big difference between the temperatures in Hanoi and Auckland. And if you look at how they played, there was a noticeable stiffness to the player's movement. And it wasn't just our defenders that were affected, it was pretty much everyone on the team. Players even after the friendly talked about how, due to the climate, they just weren't as flexible. Vietnam will be playing every single one of their group games in New Zealand, so they can't really avoid the climate. And they don't really have much time to adapt either, but they're determined to with the upcoming friendly against Spain and the training sessions that follow. One player in our defense that didn't look off was our key Chen Ti Kim Tang. Despite her being one inch taller than Muggsy Bogues, which will definitely be a pattern with pretty much the entire Vietnamese team, they are very undersized. The keeper makes it up in her proactive reflexes. Against Germany, she saved five shots out of the seven on target, and of New Zealand's 12 shots on target, she saved 10 of them. And of course, when you have games against 
far superior opponents in the US and Netherlands, you're gonna need that solid keeper to rely on. Moving on to the midfield, there's a few interesting pieces. Chun Ti Tui Chun hasn't started in a while, but many consider the 34-year-old the heart and essence of the team. Tui Chun provides peace in the world of chaos with her composure, she's a brilliant leader, and she's got a heart of steel. Tui Chung's inspiration to play football came from her brother, who unfortunately passed away the day she entered university. From that day forward, she was determined to play not only for her passion, but also her brothers. In 2017, she won her first ever Southeast Asian Games gold medal, however, the celebrations were cut short when she learned her mother had stomach cancer. From there, the midfielder would send all her money home to help treat her mother. There were even times when she had no money at all. Tui Chung's mother's condition improved the following year, however, then her father had a stroke. In shock, Tui Chung was very close to giving up on football to take care of her parents, but in the end, she continued. It's been a tough road for the midfielder, but in spite of it all, she has worked so hard to be the exceptional player she is today. Next, there's Nguyen T. Bik Tui, the woman who sent us to the World Cup. Bik Tui is more of an attacking midfielder with 11 goals and 34 caps. The midfielder I have my eyes on, though, is defensive midfielder Zum Thivan. In the match versus New Zealand, she looked very impressive. 11 successful duels, 6 tackles, 1 interception, all against a team with much better stature and physicality. And mind you, this woman is 5 feet tall. Van started playing football pretty late, age 15 actually. Van progressed pretty quickly throughout her career, but there was one point where she was close to retiring. However, the midfielder was convinced by her peers to keep going, and from there she grinded her way into the starting 11. And then, just last year, after an impressive performance in the Southeast Asian Games final, she was dubbed the Conte of Vietnamese women's football. I mean, you know the saying, 30% of the world is covered by water, the rest is covered by Zung Thi Van. Next is our attack, and this is where our star players are. Nguyen Thi Tuyet Zung is the most capped player of all time with 119 caps and she's only 29. She scored 54 goals throughout her national team career and won the Vietnamese Women's Golden Ball Award back in 2014. However, she's most known for the time she scored two goals directly from corners in the same game with both feet respectively. However, as of recent, the attacking midfielder has been demoted to the bench, mainly because so far this year she's been on a goal drought. That being said, having someone like Tuyet Zung off the bench is extremely valuable. One of our main strikers is Pham Hai Yen, who scored 42 goals in 76 caps. The 29-year-old this year is experiencing some fantastic form as she scored 5 goals in 8 caps. Then there's Nguyen Thi Tang Nha, who has absolutely exploded onto the scene in 2023. This year she scored a goal in the Southeast Asian Games final and more recently against Germany in a friendly. Not only was that an incredible feat for her, that was groundbreaking for all of Vietnamese football. The main strength of Tang Nha is her versatility. She can play on both sides of the pitch and even striker. This is all complemented by her explosive speed. Once she's past you, you're not catching up to her. And I cannot stress how much her breakthrough this year has come at such a perfect time. A player of her caliber that can evade players and has good end products could pose real problems for any opponent. Teng Nha got into football thanks to the 2008 AFF Cup Final, where Vietnam's men won its first ever title thanks to Le Cam Vinh's iconic winner. Growing up though, she had to convince her mother into letting her take football as a career path, mainly because her mother was scared of Teng Nha getting injured or even dying. This is just kind of a Vietnamese mother thing. Eventually though, after Teng Nha talked to her mother about the sport constantly, her mother was more at ease at letting her daughter play football. Teng Nha was guided on her path to being a professional by football mad teacher Zung Gak Kim. Mr. Kim is responsible for guiding many of the female stars you see on this team today. He's pretty much the unsung hero of Vietnamese women's football. Now going back to Teng Nha, alongside her footballing abilities, she is extremely bloated on social media. Throughout the last year or so, a whole portion of the country has just fallen in love with her. And trust me, I totally understand. But at just 21 years old, Teng Nha has already become the hope of the next generation of Vietnamese football. And then we save the best for last. We have the Queen of Southeast Asia herself. Hun Yu was born in Chao Tang Cha Ving, where there was no football pitch. However, that didn't stop young Hun Yu from dribbling a ball barefoot around rows of shops with other children. In fifth grade, Nyu participated in a boys' tournament and was top scorer of the tournament with four goals. Then, as she went into 10th grade, Cha Ving Province actually opened a football school for girls. Nyu would bike more than 40 kilometers to attend practice, which would result in her excellent endurance in the future. Unfortunately, though, due to lack of 
funding, the class disbanded. However, when she was 16, the young striker was discovered by Ho Chi Minh City FC's women's team, and she took the opportunity of a lifetime like many others in this video, and chose to leave home to play football. By age 20, she had worked her way up to the top at club level, which earned her a first national team call-up. Her debut couldn't have gone any better, as she scored a hat-trick against Singapore. Nye ended 2011 with an impressive 5 goals and 4 caps, but it wasn't enough for her to be a part of the 2012 Southeast Asian Games squad. Nonetheless, she put her head down, kept working hard, and scored 7 goals in 11 caps in 2013. But despite her efforts, she was once again snubbed a spot in the squad for the 2014 Asian Games this time, where Vietnam would eventually finish 4th. But f*** it we ball, she said, as she scored 6 goals in 2015, which would earn her the Vietnamese Women's Bronze Ball Award. Huynh Nhu went 2 steps further in 2016 and won her first of many Golden Ball Awards after an exceptional year. And then one year later, she finally got a call up to the Southeast Asian Games squad and won gold. Huynh Nhu was not done there though, as 2019 would be a career best. She scored 12 goals in 16 caps, helping her team win the AFF Cup and also the Southeast Asian Games again. She claimed another gold in 2022's Southeast Asian Games after scoring the winner versus Thailand in the final. But her biggest contributions came months before the tournament when she helped Vietnam qualify for their first ever World Cup. Since 2019, Huynh Nhu has been at the absolute top of her game, winning four straight gold in ball awards. And more recently, she became the first Vietnamese female footballer to play in Europe. And unlike her male counterparts who have done a miserable job so far at actually breaking through, she's had an amazing start to life at first division Portuguese club Lenk FC Villa Verdense. In her first 14 starts, she's recorded 7 goals and 2 assists. Huynh Nhu's style of play as a striker revolves around her speed and technical ability and lack of a weak foot. Throughout her career, she has shown countless times with her exceptional dribbling, her ability to sway past defenders like those shops in her childhood. Another aspect of her game that seems to be left unnoticed is her positioning. Oftentimes she'll drop back as a false 9 or even a number 10 to provide players another passing option and also to lure in defenders. This as a result opens another dimension of possibilities for Vietnam's attack. However, at times, Huynh Nhu can drop even deeper in the midfield to act as a mediator for the tempo. This year, Huynh Nhu has been on fire, scoring 5 goals and 8 caps. However, she did recently just come back from injury and didn't look that great against New Zealand. But there is still time for her to rejuvenate, as there is a friendly actually tonight as of this recording against Spain. Uh... Since the day she was born, Huynh Nhu has challenged adversity head on and conquered it. Through all these challenges, she cemented herself as arguably the greatest Vietnamese footballer of all time, and she continues to reach new heights in her illustrious career. Now, talking about... Vietnam's chances. The nationalistic side of me says this team wins by 10 goals against every opponent and we win the entire damn thing. But if I'm being actually honest with myself here. Honestly, it's really hard to even see this team earn a single point. As I've said before, we talked about how good all these players are. The problem is there's still a massive gap between them and the opponents we have to face. Even the head coach himself has said that this is more of an opportunity to learn from these opponents. And I'm completely fine with that. Because no matter the performance of this team, these Golden Girls have already made an entire nation prouder than it could possibly be. All the stories that have been told in this video are just a few of many on this team. The Vietnamese women you'll see this World Cup have put a lot on the line to make their dreams come true and will continue to do so. A lot of them had to leave home at an early age just to pursue what they love. And because of that, they've all had to face the struggles of isolation and homesickness on top of all the other limitations like size and skill. But no matter the challenge, these women have broken through every single wall with willful determination so infectious that it's gained the attention of millions in the country. Starting in 1990, this program has had a meteoric rise and the World Cup is only going to shoot us up even farther. Because this time, instead of seeing the men achieve success, young girls will be seeing their own make history for this country. So that was the preview and I know people are going to ask this question because I am a Vietnamese American. Who will I be rooting for between Vietnam and the US? Good question. This has been asked to me even before the draws have happened, even before Vietnam qualified for the World Cup. I've thought about it a lot, especially since I am a resident of the US, I've never actually been to the country of Vietnam, but the thing is, this is Vietnam's first ever World Cup, so just because of that, I think I'll probably lean towards Vietnam more than the US, like I'll go full Vietnam actually. 
against the US. I almost forgot to mention this in the video, I didn't even mention in the script, but there was the one thing I remember I forgot in the script, and that was the worries that we would be another Southeast Asian team that the US would eat alive. I don't really think the country needs to worry too much about that because not even the women themselves are worrying about that. So that being said, I don't think we'll beat the US, it'd be pretty funny if we did. I, I know the US are struggling with their head coach right now, but listen, I don't think we have much of a chance either way. But of course, a massive shout out to all our patrons, including Stin, Janos Balas, Milioway009, Aldipu, Alex Rod, Ulta, Araisan, Carlos Anaya, Chris Damaseno, Daniel Ortiz, Francisco Hernandez, Guy, Joel Cavallo, Marco Fujimoto, Miguel Munoz, Return Fire, Rory Burns, Saw, Slider Kid, Sniffworks, Taco Okafa, Tomicus, Vanilla Mexican 17, Victor, Chris Visconsi, Q Snyder Champs 2022, Dominic Griffin, Emmett Shea, Louis, Joe Paricio, Lucian Von Kreuz, Michael Nista, Niche, Patrick Barley, Sylvia Citrus, Unbroken Persona, and Valencia14. If you'd like to join the Patreon, there'll be a link down below and up in the annotations. You can follow my Twitter if you want, definitely going to live tweet about every single Vietnam match. Uh, you can follow my Instagram as well, you can follow my TikTok, trying to get to 20,000 there, and of course you can follow my semi-active Twitch. But until then, I'll see you guys.